Hey everybody, it's Brian Shannon from alphatrends.net. Today is Friday, the 13th of November, 2015, and we just finished a pretty ugly week for equities. The S&P 500 is now negative for the year. Um, that, of course, doesn't include uh, dividends, so that doesn't come into the consideration in these numbers. This is purely based on the price movement without dividends paid. But the S&P is down 1.46% on that basis after losing 3.5% this week. The NASDAQ, 4.5%, Russell 2000, semiconductors, all down more than 4%, and uh, oil really was a uh, bloodbath. We can take a look at the charts here in a moment, but uh, first I wanted to tell you that I broke my promise that I am not delivering on the new charts this week. However, on Wednesday, I am conducting a free webinar where I will show you what those charts are and tell you how exactly you can participate in those. It's not going to be a sales pitch, I promise. If you're familiar with my work, you know I'm not a promoter, but uh, it's an opportunity to take a look in real time how I look at the market market with those tools. We'll look at uh, the market like we're doing here today, but in live time, uh, as well as some stocks and take some individual questions. So go to alphatrends.net if you're listening to this on uh, YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, that is. Go to alphatrends.net for the registration link, and it will be recorded. However, you have to sign up. If you sign up for the uh, uh, webinar, then the people who have signed up will receive the uh, recording, or if you're on the weekly email list. Otherwise, if you're on YouTube, uh, you got to get uh, get on one of those two ways to get it. Anyways, let's take a look at this market. We had a pretty good pullback uh, coming into this week. We were very cautious about the market, saying that uh, it was having trouble and that if it would get, you know, basically, if it stayed below 210 and a half, then we were going to remain guilty till proven innocent. And we were cautious that the five-day moving average was flattening out. Well, we made a lower low below the declining five-day moving average. We recovered up to to that declining five-day moving average and just unfolded from there. I had pointed out in some blog posts this week as far as the potential for support at the 150 and 200-day moving average. Obviously, those did not hold, and that's why we don't buy pullbacks to moving averages. Instead, we take a look at the action. So when it gets down to that 200-day moving average at about 206, we look on a shorter-term time frame and say, is there any evidence that the buyers are actually gaining control in there? And there was no such evidence. We still had a declining five-day moving average, and we had this market continuing lower. So last night, I posted a uh, chart on Twitter uh, re referencing some other points. And uh, for instance, the volume-weighted average price since the September 29th low, and that's that uh, blue line right here. That's the volume-weighted average price since the last uh, uh, pullback low. That is, of course, right here. So looking on 30-minute time frames. And again, these tools are all going to be explained in Wednesday's webinar. Webinar. And I'm also going to give you the opportunity to get the exact same page that I use. The uh, the service, actually, you can tell I'm excited about it. It's only 40 bucks a month, too, for live real-time data. Anyways, this is the volume-weighted average price since the September 28th low. I'd also pointed out uh, that based on Fibonacci, we often look for uh, you know retracements of a big move. A 38.2% retracement brings us right down in towards that volume-weighted average price near 202. And then I had gone on to point out that the head and shoulders pattern, with this being the left shoulder, this being the head, and this being the right shoulder, that the height of that pattern, what we do to come up with a price objective for a, uh, a move is we take the height of the pattern. So in, a, in this case, in, in other words, we're taking the, you know, this is the height of the pattern. So from the head to the neckline, and then we subtract it from where it breaks down. Well, if you see, I just took that line there and moved it over to show you that this is you know the height of that pattern uh, is pretty much comes right down into this 202 ish area and we also have of course this being a prior level of uh, resistance in here support and resistance I should say because it was resistance right in here which turned into support on that last uh, one of those last legs higher and now we're coming back down to test that once again so going into Monday we're at a pretty important level of potential support for this market it's not a reason to buy it's a reason to continue to look at shorter term time frames and look for actual evidence if the buyers are gaining control so we look at today's action for instance today you know this includes the pre-market and then after the market close here as well you know we had 
pretty much a bloodbath in the markets today. It did not hold the daily S2. It did for a little while. And as I pointed out to subscribers in the chat room, this could be maybe a day trade opportunity. And over here, I said, do not allow it. If you're day trading this long, do not allow it to turn into a loss because the pattern of lower highs and lower lows below a declining five-day moving average is still in existence. So know your time frame. But if you're in a, you know, in this market thinking, where does it have the potential to go? I've just pointed out some good reasons to think that 202 is a potential level uh, of support. But you look at it and this prior band of resistance really is where we could come down to. We might undercut that 50-day moving average. A lot of people look for the 50-day moving average to hold as support. We know that it's a level to look at as potential support. Just as, as we undercut it, we were looking at as potential resistance, but it didn't find the resistance there. Going backwards again, we had all this whole, you know, for this rally from the September 29th uh, rally, the five-day moving average had been advancing the entire time. We got cautious over here, but what we didn't see was a pattern of lower highs and lower lows below a flat to declining five-day moving average. That, however, is what we have right now. We have a pattern of lower highs and lower lows below a declining five-day moving average. So if we bounce in this area, I would not expect it to be a bigger move. Not yet. It would be something that I think you could cautiously cautiously trade to the long side, but we've got a very uncertain market. Don't forget about how important this prior level of support had been and that we had undercut that and, and you know, found a little bit of resistance briefly, but, but rallied right up through it. So this is still another critical level. And then we look at, you know, at the weekly time frame, it's not looking great. We're going to see that investors are going to continue to be frustrated and it is going to be the swing traders, the intermediate term traders who benefit most from this type of volatility. Fortunately, that's the time frame that I choose and that we talk about each day on Alpha Trends. So uh, going into next week, let's look for this market to see if it can settle down and find some support below us. But don't blindly buy into any level. Buying blindly into any level of perceived support, such as a 200-day moving average at 206 yesterday, you're down a quick 2% right there. And nobody needs that uh, type of headache overnight. Uh, the national NASDAQ was down, obviously, as well as we've mentioned. It was down for the week, 4.3%. Uh, and looking at the chart of that, you know, we had seen the the, the breakout to all-time highs, uh, not all-time highs, but recovery highs. And uh, the all-time highs are up in here, all-time closing highs. Uh, but what we had seen is that, uh, you know, again, as we, as we often talk about, it's not just the breakout that matters, but how did it get there? Where has it come from? It came along with way to get there and then it you know it's so it expended a lot of energy and as you know so it makes those purchases at new all-time highs risky of course now we broke the trend line we broke below the five-day moving average we came down tested that five-day moving average it found resistance and the sell-off resumed from there so we've seen that obviously from this gap this prior band of support obliterated and now we've got to look at where's the potential for support in this market if we take a look at Fibonacci in here, we can see that the September 29th low kind of lines up approximately with the volume weighted average price since that September 29th low. So 38.2% brings us down into this level. Some people look at, the, you know, uh, saying, hey, I'm going to buy it when it closes the gap. And, you know, that makes it a level that we want to be aware of, but it's not a reason to act because there's no evidence that the buyers are there yet. Wait for the big buyers to come in and, and, and you know, cover their shorts and, and new long money to come in and establish the support. Let them do the dirty work. Our job as traders is to recognize the trend and get involved in the trend, not to create those trends and not to make a stand in front of all this selling pressure. That's just foolish. So we have the potential, I think, for support down in this 108.5 to 109 level. That's where it would make sense for it to maybe settle down a little bit. When we look at the daily chart, we can see that that, you know, if we were to undercut that, then I think the next uh, logical level for this market to drop down to would be about 107 to 108, where we have uh, 107 and a half to 108, where we have prior resistance and we have that rising 50 day moving average. Here's a volume weighted average price for the NASDAQ and uh, year to date that is. And for the S&P 500, you can see we've undercut that once again. So it's not really offering support or resistance, but it is a good reference point to say, what's the psychology? 
methodology, what's the average price that uh, buyers and sellers have transacted uh, uh, business in the S&P 500 year to date, that is right around this level here at about 204.50. For the Russell 2000, you can see we fell short of the year to date volume weighted average price. The uh, Russell 2000 had, as we know, a couple weeks ago, uh, broken this downtrend line, and then we were getting bullish on it as it got back above this band of resistance. Well, it got back above that band of resistance and had been, you know, it came down and tested it. The rising five day moving average kept us uh, bullish on it or cautiously bullish. And then as it broke, down this week and made, uh, a, you know, found resistance at the declining five day moving average. It said the intermediate term trend was changing. We had the potential for support to be found at this prior resistance, but it just dropped right down through there, right to the volume weighted average price since the September 29th low. Now, that doesn't mean we found a bottom. We, you know, we've still got 112 and a half to 113, I think, to come back and test the bottom end of this range. Uh, we're right, you know, we closed below the 50 day moving average. We're on that trend line. So this seems like the likely area for support, but it doesn't make any sense to buy until we actually have the price confirmation. As I said last week, and I say all the time, we want to anticipate all potential scenarios, but wait for price confirmation on our time frame before we actually commit our hard-earned money and participate in an unfolding trend, not playing guessing games. Semiconductors broke an important level of support this week at that 54 level. Uh, so looking at a 30-minute time frame here, each one of these candles representing 30 minutes. This band of prior support in here, this you know what was resistance came to support that was tested and you know as we broke down we'd seen the pressure was building from the downside we were making lower highs we had a declining five-day moving average support broke as did that volume weighted average price now we have to back it up to a daily time frame and say where's the potential for this market the semiconductors to find uh, support perhaps they come back down towards this level where we had prior resistance at about 51 and a half to 52 that would undercut the 50-day moving Moving average in there as well. A lot of times these markets will undercut a 50 day moving average, which is rising or pop up through it and then come back down because there's a lot of stops often uh, on the other side of those moving averages. The year to date volume weighted average price is also where we hit, we're finding that support. So I think that changes the psychology. If we get rallies up towards this level, be on the lookout for the potential of resistance in there. The biotechs buck the trend here today, but that was just a one day event. It was up 1.1% for the day. And uh, again, obviously for the biotechs, you know, they were still down 2% for the week. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, hanging on to gains for the year of 6.6%. But this, you know, this group has been just a, uh, a disaster. Uh, we've got this downtrend line uh, where the market found resistance on that latest push higher. That latest push higher also brought it up to the volume weighted average price year to date. And more importantly, where do you become, do you, where do you go back to bearish? Well, once it made those higher highs above the rising five day moving average, it didn't make sense to be bearish. But as it breaks the five day moving average, the five day moving average flattens out. And then we see the five day moving average declining and we make lower lows below it. That's the time to become bearish in there. So I think that for next week, this is the critical level to remain below if we're going to see it continue lower. And I would also think that, uh, you know, today's highs are going to be important. If we break back above today's highs, it's not we're not by any means out of the woods. Maybe we rally up and pull back and then, you know, break higher from there. The bottom line is nobody knows what's going to happen. But if we listen to the message of the market and look at it on shorter term time frames to try and anticipate all potential scenarios, then we're prepared and we're not making emotional decisions. We're not surprised when the market drops down to 202 and change. Instead, we're prepared for it. We're waiting in cash or you're short. Uh, on the way down there, oil, by the way, had a uh, you know, as, as we saw on the uh, on this spreadsheet, oil's down 35 percent, represented by the um, uh, by the ETF USO. Here's actually you know, West Texas Intermediate crude. You can see that this market broke some important support, and we're looking like we're heading back down towards testing the lows uh, for the year in oil. So, obviously, great for the consumer, not good for. Uh, oil companies and that sort of thing. A lot of individual stocks are having trouble as well. Apple, we, we were cautious coming into the week on Apple because it was stuck under the five-day moving average. It broke support, 
lower highs and lower lows below a declining five-day moving average. That's not what you want to see if you're a buyer. And if you look at uh, you know what we were talking about in here as well, this prior band of support we spoke about last week had the high likelihood of becoming resistance. Now, you don't short because it's at that prior level, but you look down at shorter term time frames and say, as it breaks down, the five-day moving average heads flat to lower, then the sellers are in control. And you can play guessing games and try to guess you know, where the volume weighted average price will, will be found or, you know, uh, you know, or at the 50 day moving average, let's say, I'm sure a lot of people got hurt uh, trying to buy at the 50 day moving average today at about 114 and a half. If we look at it, it when it was at 114 and a half, was there any evidence at all that the buyers had stepped up? None, none whatsoever. And even in here, the volume weighted average price was declining the entire day. So the sellers are in control of Apple. And that's, you know, if you if you buy stocks and downtrends, you're going to get losses. That's what you deserve to get for buying stocks and downtrends. If you're trading stocks, you trade with the direction of the trend. If you're a longer term investor, you've just got to ride this stuff out. It's up to you to decide what your time frame is and what's most suitable for you. Personally, I can't stand sitting through a downtrend like this. I feel like a complete jackass if I do that. Um, Amazon gave some ground back today. It's obviously been, you know, this phenomenal leader. It was down 23 points, which sounds like a lot, but it was 3%. Um, so we're seeing, you know, bigger names are, are undergoing some profit taking. It's not a, doing any damage to their longer term trends. But, you know, Facebook down to its uh, rising 20 day moving average. Netflix is probably, you know, the most damaged of these big ones in here. It was looking like it was maybe getting ready to break beyond this cup and handle, but it never broke beyond resistance. And again, it's below a declining five day moving average. So you don't want to be owning a stock like that. And then, of course, we've got stocks that are in downtrends that uh, are garbage stocks like Twitter continues to be, a you know, just a terrible stock to own, as does, um, you know, GoPro. GoPro just over and over again. Um, you know, as I've, as I've said, there, you know, I had some guy, you know, basically calling me an idiot because I didn't see the support at 35. And he's still tweeting about how good GoPro is and that you've just got to be patient with it. And to me, you know, seeing a stock decline from 35 to 21, it just doesn't make sense. And all these, you know, recent IPOs, Fitbit, you know, they're just having an incredible hard time. And don't be the person that buys stocks below declining five-day moving average. It really is that simple.